Hello everyone, my name is Pickle, and I run a business centered around creating and selling software for the modding platform known as 5M. Just like many others who have gone into this career, you might be wondering about how to code your own software. Well today, I'll be trying my best to show you just how you can do it yourself. Let's get started. Here's how to make a script for 5M. First, copy and paste this command on screen into your 5M console. Now you might notice that your 5M window is closed. That's how it should be. The problem with other coding tutorials online is that they try to teach you how to code something in a specific environment. Whether that's 5M, Node.js, or another coding platform, it only teaches you how to do something in that environment. And the moment you switch to a new platform, none of the strategies you've learned apply. So, to not waste your time, I will be showing you the basic structure of programming and how learning this basic structure will teach you how to learn any language you may need to use in the future. To start, I'm going to be using an online tool at REPL.ed, which allows me to write and test my Lua code. You can find the link in the description below. We can write our first comment using two dashes. Comments are basically things that get written in the file but do not get executed. I'm going to write, this will print hello world. Let's go ahead and test this out by writing print hello world and clicking run. Now, the reason why this works is because we have the function name followed by the parentheses and our parameter. Our parameter is basically a value that we can pass to the function that the function can handle using that variable. An example of this would be a function that we can create called hello world and we'll call this variable str short for string and we can end the function using end now that end is here anything between these two lines will be executed as part of the function let's go ahead and move print inside of that so that now print is executed by hello world and if we write hello world it will print hello world however what if I wanted to print something else we can replace the string hello world with the variable str please note the difference between two quotations and no quotations as that is the difference between doing a string and outputting str instead of the value of str which is nothing and nothing will be returned as nil if we wanted to do something we could say this is a string and when we rerun it it will output this is a string let's try to write something that can contain a row of data and that we can interact with that would be called an array let's go ahead and try that out Let's say apples equals an array of A, B, and C. Now, if you print apples, apples is going to return a print by the Lua compiler saying that this is the table at this address. This address doesn't really matter to most use cases. The only time you would ever need this address is if you were interacting directly with the memory, which in most cases, again, you will not be doing. So, now that we have apples, what if I want to print something from the array? We can do that by doing two brackets, not curly braces, brackets, and putting in the index that we want. In Lua, it's one, two, three, instead of 0, 1, 2. So we're going to do 1 here to print A. But what if I want to print everything inside of apples? We can make that by using what's called a loop. In Lua, you can create a loop that iterates, meaning going through each index of an array by doing 4, i equals 1, the length of the array, which would be apples, and then do. Anything inside of here, just like a function, would be executed every single iteration. So it would happen for A, B, and C. 
let's make sure we end the loop there so that anything inside of the loop stays in the loop. We're gonna go ahead and do print apples i. i is going to increase every single time we iterate until the end of apples. After the end of apples, it should not try to print anymore. Let's go ahead and try and test this. As you can see, it printed A, B, and C. Now, could I make this print all on one line? Let's try and make a function that does just that. We're gonna call this function compile array. And we're gonna put in an argument for data. And for i equals one, the length of data, do, and then return our mystery value because we want to know the end result of the string. Let's go ahead and make a new string that's empty. We can do that by making it equal nothing except the quotation marks. We can then add the string every single time we iterate by doing str equals str added to, not plus, added to, data and the index. Now, if we were to return str after compiling data, we can do something like this where compiled string equals compile array apples. It's going to pass apples through here into this array. And if we print compiled string, you will have A, B, and C. A, B, and C added together on one line. This is now defined as ABC, but what if we wanted to compile a different table? Let's say bananas is Z, X, and Y. Okay, that made no sense. X, Y, Z, X. Yeah, that's the correct order. All right, bananas can be put in here instead of apples and it will output bananas instead of apples, which should be Z, Y, X. What if I wanted to print it, but in the reverse direction? We can do that by doing this same thing. However, start at hashtag data, end at one, meaning the first index, and then adding one more parameter, negative one, which means it will go down as it compiles. And if we print this again, it's going to say X, Y, Z. There you go. And that applies to apples too. So instead of ABC, it's going to say CBA. So not only have we just written our first line of code, not only have we written another custom function, we have also now created our first loop. And not only did we create our first loop, we made our first loop that goes in reverse. Isn't that something? Let's start from scratch. We're going to do one more thing. Let's say I have, let's say I have a table called TBL and I set it to equal enabled equals false apples equals an array of ABC. And we say bananas equals 10. How can we interact with this table in various ways? Well, first we can print tbl.enabled because this is a property, not an array. We don't need to do table one. Instead, we can do table.enabled, which will return what we set here. If I change this to true, it will now be true. 
Now, let's say I want to interact with an array inside of a table. We would do table.apples. And let's say I just want to get the length of it by doing hashtag. We can do that and receive three, which is correct. There are one, two, and three different index points for apples. To end this video, let's do four different examples together to see where we are. I'm going to write a comment for each one that we do so that we know our objective. Let's go ahead and write our first one. Let's say, write a function that prints the value passed through the first parameter. Go ahead and pause the video and try and do this on your own. After you're done, unpause the video and we'll go through it together. Okay, let's go ahead and write the solution. I'm going to write a function and we're gonna say print number. We're gonna say num is the first parameters variable. We're gonna end the function and then inside of the function, we're gonna write print num. If we write print number, and then whatever value we want to pass, like 10, it should print 10. Let's go ahead and start our next prompt. Write a function that returns an added up number for all values inside of a passed array. And the example function usage is going to be example add numbers and then an array and we're going to say the test value is one two five ten added up this should return 18. all right go ahead and start your prompt and when you're done unpause the video all right, let's go ahead and start. Function add numbers array. And inside of this add numbers function, we're gonna add a variable that we can add to. We'll say it's num and it'll equal zero because we're gonna start with zero and add numbers to it. And at the end of it, we should return num. For i equals one in the array, we're going to add to num what the index of that current index is. I'm sorry. We're going to add to the current, we're going to add the value of the current index to num. So if it's one, it's going to add num plus one. It's going to then add num plus two, which would then be three because we already added one to the num. After that, let's go ahead and print our example case and it should return in the console 18. Let's write another prompt. For this prompt, we're going to have an environment where there's a value called TBL and it's a table that contains properties, including enabled, which will equal false and amount, which will equal 10. For this prompt, you're going to write two functions. Write two functions. One that checks if TBL has enabled, set to true, and one that checks what, I'm sorry, and one that gets the value of amount. Go ahead and start your prompt and unpause the video when you're ready. All right, let's write the prompts. So function is TBL enabled is going to check 
tbl.enabled. Now we could just do if tbl enabled equals true, then return true, else return false. But there's an easier way to do it. If tbl is already a value that is true or false, you can just return tbl.enabled because enabled equals false. Enabled is false, so indirectly, this would return false as well because it is set to false. For the other function, we can do get tbl amount and we can return tbl.amount which in this case is set to 10. Let's go ahead and print is tbl enabled and call it. And let's also print get tbl amount and both of these should print false and 10. This is the last prompt of the video. Let's go ahead and try this one out. Write a function that calls another function to get a certain value. Then print the initial function's value. Go ahead and try that out and I will see you in a moment. We're gonna do this as function one. And function two. Now, since we're calling only one function, which is function one, Let's go ahead and get this ready by just printing function one's result. Now we need a returned value from function two. So let's say return 10. We can then return function two directly from function one and print that value that we received from function two, which is 10. That's going to wrap up the basic tutorial for Lua. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll try and answer some of them. If you guys need any professional resources for your 5M server, make sure you go to picklemods.com. See you guys later. Bye.